Hello everybody, in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Nubia Red Magic 5S phone. I've actually been using this phone for a while already. I think it's been 2-3 weeks since I started using this phone. My old phone was a uh, iPhone 7 and to be honest, I've always preferred Android phones. I went with an iPhone 7 because I figured that iOS probably runs RKI better because of optimization. I've always had a bad experience playing random games on Android phones and today I'm going to be testing this phone to find out if Androids are good for random games at all. Actually, honestly, uh, I know the low-end Androids can get really bad, but what about the high-end ones? So this is the Nubia Red Magic 5S. It is a gaming phone, it has 144Hz display and apparently 240Hz touch. And yeah, it does have touch triggers here, which apparently runs at a higher polling rate. The, the phone has uh, uses USB Type-C, and it has a headphone jack, that's great! I believe that this is an event. There is a fan in this phone. When you turn it on at full blast, you can really hear the fan. Yeah, here's another vent. And this is a speaker. So, uh, it has a touch. Oh, oops, I'm playing Arkea. It does have a touch sensor for fingerprints, and that's really cool, it's on screen. Camera quality wise, it's actually pretty okay, I guess. It's not, it's nothing great. Especially for its price. Uh, it's still a mid-tier phone photos wise but you know when you're a gamer I don't think you really need amazing amazing camera footage. I'm gonna just snap a picture real quick. I mean to be honest I'm quite impressed with the display. The display is uh, AMOLED if I'm not wrong and boy it looks so good especially compared to using a phone that's really outdated. <laughs> Honestly if you want a good phone reveal like for phones or games, you're better off watching someone else. I'm just testing whether this is really that good for written games. The touch, the inputs. The inputs to me is really important when it comes to written games. In fact, I think written games have the most taxing inputs ever. Despite written games being one of the easiest games to run, it is so reliant on having accurate and on-time inputs that you really need something that can keep up. So that's why I want to run some tests on this. Another interesting thing is that this is not actually 16x9. It is wider than 16x9. The resolution is, uh, I'll just put it on the screen right now, it's, it's definitely not 1080p. It's longer than that. It's not a 4K screen, and I imagine the reason why they went with a longer screen, as you can see, you can barely fit the frame, is because when you play first person shooter games like let's say PUBG, it's nicer to have a wider view, which is great. And plus, it has the touch triggers here, help with playing these kinds of games. Honestly, having this phone made me want to play <laughs> PUBG and all that other games more. And oh, PSP emulating. Alright, the speakers are alright. They can get very loud, but I can hear a bit of distortion the moment you crank it out at full volume. The, the sound is not good. Oh, I hear this. It starts to get extremely piercing, especially at the treble range, and that's that's not good. But with the triggers, you can play PSP games, pretty nice. Uh, one thing I missed a lot from Android is that I can use the emulator. <laughs> Alright, so an interesting thing when it comes to this phone is that it does have this really interesting switch here that turns on game mode. It scans for f games on your phone and then it adds it here. Actually, when you add a game, it doesn't show the, these images. You have to add them separately. So let's say uh, I want to add in Outer Eagle and the game mode should appear here. Now, this is how it looks like when you don't have any image set. Then you can modify the image by like, I don't know, they have these really uh, stock images here which are kind of weird. Uh, I guess these are for different games that they just set in the popular ones. But all the games I play and you play are uh, not very popular, unfortunately. So yeah, I can just add a add a picture. Um, it's my table, but it's upside down. Oh yeah, I took this with my phone. It actually looks pretty good. Um, it's upside down, but but yeah. When you go into gaming mode, what it does is that I believe it stops the notifications and all that, which is great. I have lost like a bunch of runs because of notifications. You can block calls too, apparently, and you can turn on the fan. Uh, the fan thing is especially interesting to me. Let me just show you guys that fan. You have this fan thing and there's intelligent adjustment and then you have rapid cooling so it puts it at, at like max speed and you can actually hear the fan like no joke it's audible. That's so strange but yeah I'm gonna put it on intelligent adjustment. 
yeah so uh this is 144 hertz you can change it to uh, 90 hertz and 60 hertz you lower the hertz because you want to save battery the only frame of reference i have against this right now is my ipad pro 2017 but let's see if this can match up right now obviously it's not as big but it is quite a big screen in fact it's so big that i've been having problems holding my hand or sending messages with one hand yep that's a problem it's too big for my hands it's not practical in real life scenarios at least for me all right so let's just do some arcade then all right let's try doing the offset adjustment I'm pressing whenever I hear the beat and then I touch accordingly. I don't touch it to the sound of my tapping, like here, which is what you're supposed to time to, by the way. When I play rhythm games, I rely on the time my input is sent, then the sound my fingers make. And that kind of leads to really strange sounding live plays where the sounds of my taps and the music sounds completely off. And this is this is actually crazy. And I honestly think that this is a bit a little bit too early for me. In one second, let me just turn off the shoulder triggers. Yep, you can use shoulder triggers. You how the shoulder triggers work is that you put them. So this is where the left shoulder trigger will press, and this is where the right shoulder trigger will press. And yes, no kidding. You can you can this means that you can use this on Arcade. I've been using it to press my lanes because why not? But I'm gonna turn it off. Right, one thing I noticed about this phone. Right off the bat, the design doesn't work so well. This is too wide, especially because it's of whiteness. You cannot use thumbs on this. It's impossible to cross hands without like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable. If it wasn't so wide, it might actually have been possible, but you can't. And so this means you have to play with your fingers on the table. And also look at this. The back is curved. That's, that means it's not nice to put this on the table. I don't really know why they curve the back. Maybe it was to make it more ergonomic, but this is this is an issue. I mean, it gets a little bit better when you put it on the cover. But the issue is still there. And also this thing slides around a lot. Um, yes, even with the cover on, please get some rubber. Please consider investing in one of these. They cost like a couple of dollars. Okay, it might be Android because I heard that uh, Arcade on Android is quite finicky, especially with the arcs. They just drop for no reason. Like it, they, it's, it's, the arcs in Android is more buggy, but that's what my friend says. I'm not sure completely. Yes, I do notice that I've been dropping more arcs on my phone. I can't tell if it's because of the smaller screen, or because I'm not doing well, or because the phone can't handle it, or straight up because Android Arcade. This is the first time on my Android and I, I touch and then like the inst it instantly presses. I can't believe this, this offset of minus 78 is actually correct. I was playing on zero offset and okay, let's see how I play on zero offset then. Okay, this sounds crazy, but I feel like I played better with the offset being like way shifted back. It feels off to me now because of the way I play. I, I wouldn't put minus 78. I probably would put leave it at minus 50. That, that's how I play. But lately, I've been trying to learn how to time myself to the sound of my taps and this weird internal um, calibration I have going on in me. But yes, let's go back to the game space.
The high refresh rate really helps though, and I find myself playing a lot more Dance of Fire and Ice on my phone now. The only problem I had with being on Android is that I had to rebuy all the games again. <laughs> I've been feeling that the wider screen aspect ratio has been a nothing but a drawback because it means that the, you can't play thumbs, and the extra screen real estate does not matter when it comes to this. When it comes to a lot of random games, okay, because the screen is. Curve. It looks like the icon edges are a bit cut out. It looks like there is still no option to change hit error size in Osu. Okay, that, that's annoying. Oh wow, Osu is really, really updated with all these things. The icons are all different and all oh, the chat still looks terrible. The hit error is way too small. Can you guys even see it? I can't see the hit error. Oh, I could be wrong and that I can't use this method of checking polling rate on a phone because touch screens and keyboards work differently. Too bad the shoulder buttons only output touch because it would be nice if we could output key presses and I can use down also. Okay, can I see how many FPS this thing runs at? Oh, that's tiny. Okay, and right now on the pause screen, the input is at stable 100, audio is at 100, update is at 100, draw is also at 100, so the input is 240Hz. It does say that, that's that's really cool. Okay, so it is legit, it's for real. Too bad I couldn't use I couldn't use the BPM test to tell myself because I was really curious to see whether I can do that polling rate test on phones as well. Looks like I can't. Let's move to the next game. So far, for every single game, the, the wider screen has been completely useless. As you can see here, you can see there's black bars. This is actually not a part of the game. This is actually the game filling in the extra space that the screen has. Except, the one game that I saw had a use of this the stretch screen was actually over rapid. I haven't played this on my channel yet, but the thing about over rapid is that it uses six lanes. And you need a big phone for that. Oh, an iPad. If it wasn't stretched, the lanes would be this thick, which is not much space for your fingers, but there's way more space on your, for your fingers now on Overwrap It. It kind of really reminds me of, well, it's great, basically, <laughs> for Overwrap It. It made pressing the lanes much easier in comparison to without it, actually. It's comfortable. And if you don't like the stretching, you can still turn it off in the overwrap it settings. I need to cover overwrap it on my channel soon. It's, I've been having so much fun playing this. Like I have, I can play all kinds of games on this phone, but overwrap it is the one that I've been enjoying a lot. By the way, the battery life of this phone is actually huge. I can't remember how many milliamps it uses, but when I was on 60 hertz or refresh rate, from full battery, uh, it basically lasted me. Uh, one and a half days. Like I would wake up in the morning, okay, hundred percent. At the end of the day, 12, 12 midnight, I'm when I'm home, I'm just using my phone. I think I had like forty percent left, and that's kind of crazy. Not gonna lie. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how it looks like if I didn't stretch the screen. This is much, much smaller. Less space for your fingers to move. But yeah, uh, that's over rapid uh, with this phone. Let's go and try Opsu because I want to know how many frames per second this is going to run at. Well, I guess I'm going to assume that this is at 120 FPS, I think. I can't see it. If not wrong, nowadays also Droid runs about the same as Opsu. Probably a little bit better actually. So I imagine that all the people who are really competitive at Osu Droid, yes, the competitive Osu Droid community does exist. 
they will go out of their way to get a good Android phone. I think they already do that. Because in all of old Osu Droid videos you can find on YouTube, they're mostly, uh, you can see the input delay. And nowadays, I think with uh, newer phones like these and the fact that Osu Droid probably updated and has optimized itself, it's it's not laggy anymore. It's not like it, like it used to be back then. I should play all these games, but I think what matters is that I just showed how it performs and so far it's been performing on par with my iPad. I don't think it's any better, which means that it's peak performance, at least from what I felt. And so far, the frame rates and the touch inputs, they feel pretty good. And uh, one thing I really like doing is going on game mode and trying to play Arkea as scuffed as possible with the shoulder triggers. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is really scuffed. Gaming phone aside, is this a good phone as a daily driver? I am personally not a fan of size, especially with the length. But then again, I have small hands. Some people are into that. If, if you only have enough money for, let's say, one good gaming phone, actually, this, is, this isn't this is that highly priced for a gaming phone either. So let's say you have only that amount of money and you either get this, a gaming phone, or you get a really low-end phone and iPad Pro, that will really depend on you actually. Do you want to have a bigger screen when you play things or do you want to have a small screen? Do you want to have these two devices or just one device? So should you get this phone? I'm not sure. I'll just leave it up to you guys to decide. I'll leave the pros and cons on the screen right now and well, thanks for watching the video. And be sure to check them out if you're interested. I'll leave the li links in the description and thanks to them for sending me a free unit to try. Thanks for watching.